This is Tell Me Something Good About Retail with Bob Fibbs, the Retail Doctor. The champion for a more human connection in retail for over 30 years as a retail doctor. Bob is the authority on brick and mortar retail across the world, who works with some of the biggest luxury brands to independent retailers of all sizes. Retail Doc. Thanks for joining me today for the podcast. Today, I am talking to Nolan Wheeler. He is CEO and founder at Sync Technology, and he's talking today about how to replace old analog infrastructure with what today's consumer expects and how to bring retail into the new age. And if you're watching the video of this, you have a special treat because I have him live uh, going into a store today. Welcome, Nolan. Thanks for having me, Bob. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, you know, everything we're reading in the news is security, security, security. Everyone's stealing everything. Everyone's being locked up. And I know when the pre uh, call, you were talking about being at a conference recently. And what was the big idea to fix security? Oh, I think it was more like, you know, thicker glass, bigger locks, and more call buttons or something like that, Bob. Yeah, and we all like that, right? I mean, um, because that's why we go into a retail store. Am I wrong on that? What's the what's the problem? The more I, I don't know. It's, it's it seems as though we like to put all our revenue in, in prisons uh, of glass, uh, and then uh, put up some radio call buttons. Uh, that seems to be the uh, the status quo right now, Bob. Well, it is, and you know the it's a but it's a very real thing, right? Because culturally, not to sound too tipper gore about this, but we're seeing an awful lot of media where people go in and steal stuff and and then there's viral clips and isn't that great and everything and it's a big company so why do we have to worry about it but the real challenge for retailers is i want to hold on to this stuff and sell it so um is there a way that you know theft prevention can actually help lift sales yeah, I think, you know, we've been playing around with this for the last two and a half or three years. We've done a couple hundred million interactions on this platform between customers and associates. And, and we do genuinely think that not only is there an opportunity to solve and quell this really bad friction. You know, Kevin Nealon, the comedian, he was uh, in a in a store last week uh, and he was uh, joking about all the toothpaste being locked up and how he picked the lock with a toothpick uh, and, <laughs> and, and stole some crest. So, so yeah, I mean, everybody's frustrated with this whole thing. And, and I think that as we go through this live store demo, this is a store that's been running this platform for like three years. Um, we're going to talk about the numbers, the data, the, the labor economics, the reduction in friction. And we're going to talk about, you know, there's this link between high value products that are, that are of a challenge high cube products, which are kind of the big items that you can't put in a cart, like a patio set or a barbecue or, or a TV. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, the velocity of the product because we don't buy um, all these expensive items every two days, like we buy chips and pop. Uh, so, so we're going to have a kind of a cool conversation about let's, let's, let's start using operational and merchandising tools as opposed to policing tools to solve this problem. We, we have the tools as retailers. I love that. Well, let's take a step back real quick. So just tell me a little bit about your journey from working at Best Buy to becoming, you know, CEO of Sync. What, how do we get there? Yeah, I mean, I, I've spent basically my life in retail prior to Sync. I was at uh, Safeway. Um, I was at uh, Loblaws up here in Canada. Uh, I was at Best Buy for, uh, for a bit. And, and yeah, I had store and district and, and, and I actually had a senior regional role at one point. Um, so yeah, I mean, went through all of the pain points of, not having tools and having the LP guys of which I was one of those LP guys maybe contributing to this challenge of, you know, the only solutions were, you know, policing tools, glass locks, and we alienated our customer and we frustrated our staff. And, and this just is no longer something that is acceptable. We have to change the way that we look at high risk products and stores. And I think that as we go through this real life store, you'll see that this is just a methodology that really retailers can't afford not to adapt. Well, I'm going to, we're almost there folks at home about going to see this actually in store. I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, how has retail technology evolved? Because the things you're going to show us weren't even possible 10 years ago. And the other thing I want you to talk about quickly is you also mentioned the frustration for employees. You know, the, if it, the probably the second thing everyone's talking about, if it's not shoplifting and loss control, it's employees are burning out and getting out 
you know, they start and then they just don't show up. And things like this can certainly impact them. So tell about the retail technology as well as the employee aspect, if you would. Yeah, it's a brilliant call out. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you think as a customer, the frustration of just trying to find an associate, imagine spending an entire day of being, you know, followed around in a store. It's like man to man coverage of trying to get people to help you and the frustration that goes into that. And you talk about a locking showcase, you know, we're walking up and locking up, otherwise we're circumventing locking showcases. So, you know, it's, it's no surprise that there's a tremendous amount of turnover in retail. And, and frankly, right now, if you are not giving tools to your, your retail uh, associate, it, it's a tough day. You're getting yelled at, you're getting called on radios and in paging systems. It's, it's not really the, 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 the nicest work environment if you think about using analog tools to try to resolve the high pace of retail. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, uh, I know you're partnered with Microsoft and, uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to show that off as we move through. So why don't we take a little break? Can you tell us where you are in the world to uh, show us this? I, I, I certainly can. I, we are in our hometown of Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, we decided to choose the world's toughest city to try to do commerce over in the Pacific time zone on a stranded on a small island. <laughs> but uh, but it, but it's been a, a really fun experience out here. And it's also fun because you know, a lot of times you get challenged on uh, adoption of technology and Victoria is known as uh, many things, but also of the town of the nearly dead. So uh, if we can pull it off in Victoria, the retirement community of Canada, uh, we might just be able to pull it off everywhere. I can't think of a better intro, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So here we go. Let's walk in. Let's take a look at this store. So um, this store was built in, um, I don't know, about six years ago. Um, and it's a really visionary uh, guy that owns the store. This is a Canadian tire, but they're franchise owned. So you can have a very wide swath of different experience when you go into these stores. Um, but this is a super cool one. This was actually uh, a defunct Target. Uh, and this is probably one of the coolest retail stores in Canada, let alone one of the coolest Canadian tire stores in Canada. But as you'll come in uh, to the store, you'll see that, you know, we've got a customer pickup desk with a progress monitor like you would see at like McDonald's because this is going to be the theme of a lot of the customer requests that go through the store. Um, we have some pickup lockers and drop off lockers that are located close to that location. And as we go through the store, you'll notice a number of things as we're on this call. One, you will never hear a page that goes off in this store. Um, you will not see a single radio on any of the associates. Everything in the store is digital and it's digital through the enablement of Microsoft Teams. So Nolan, you know, when you were outside, uh, you talked about how you partnered with Microsoft. So how does this partnership benefit retailers and especially in terms of task automation and communication? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just mentioned this is on the Microsoft Teams platform and that can be uh, kind of a trivia, trivia to, to, to folks to think about how the heck is that work conferencing platform that we're using within our modern life and in, in, in all of our teleconferencing relevant to this. The cool thing about this is that Every single one of these items that you would have had in a locking showcase that is all sitting in a high velocity uh, area at the front of the store, every notification, Bob, is actually going through Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams has this really cool, very underutilized tool called Adaptive Cards. You can think about it as like an Uber fare, but what we can do in Teams is we can take the organizational structure of a retail store. So we can say automotive in this case of this store, and we can say drills, and we can say power tools and all those different teams. And we can actually say, you know what? You're the right person to pick the DeWalt drill that the customer wants. It's gonna to go to you as an adaptive card. And if you don't pick that uh, item within like say a minute or two minutes or just acknowledge that you're gonna claim it, again, through the power of Teams, it's gonna escalate that through all the channels up to potentially even including like the store manager of the store, who's gonna go up to the customer and say, I'm so sorry you had to wait seven minutes because it's showing seven minutes on the ticker. I just wanted to come down and do this pick myself because it was just so unfair to you to wait seven minutes for your drill. So we're using Microsoft Teams and adaptive cards for every single one of the work functions of what would have been an analog task with radios and headsets. So Nolan, let's go back because as you walked in there, there was we that, that big uh, triangle on the floor. And what was that red triangle saying? Yeah, no, good, good question, Bob. You'll actually notice that in every single aisle of the store, we've got a text for help. So this is actually a technology that we developed that's again on Microsoft Teams. And we think about different technologies in the sense that some technologies are required to have an app. Uh, some technologies are required to do a sign in or to register. All this stuff is all low bar. So the lowest bar that we can think of is text messaging. 98% of Americans will send a text message this week. Um, we use text messaging as an ability to say, you know what, you might not be able to find 
help in stores. I think you'll see that across pretty much every single retail chain in North America, challenging to find help in stores. This is the, you can always get connected with somebody in store because you just text the word help or you text the word balloons or whatever that word is to get you through to the right Microsoft Teams channel. And you'll be able to talk to an associate whereby you're texting, not downloading apps or any of those things. And what you end up having is the associate is sitting in t inside Teams, super secure, anonymizing the, the, the phone number. It, it's a wicked solution and it's super low bar for adoption. Well, let's go back. So uh, to some of you may not have, he goes through that pretty quickly because this is his world. But, you know, uh, a few years ago at NRF, Amazon made all the news because they were going to have walk, just walk in and just walk out technology. Well, that's fine, but that's an awful lot of technology to make it work. And you have to be part of the Amazon structure to be able to use it. Others are talking about, uh, you were referencing, having to have an app or something special. What I particularly liked about what Sync does is you're not asking me to do an interface anything other than what I'm already doing every day, which makes adoption so much higher. That's probably why you've been doing this for three years at that store, right? Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to technology is great, but if people don't use it, it doesn't matter how cool it is. So it's all about being, you know, I'll take a step back. We're resolving physical friction. And I have lots of quirky sayings, but one of those quirky sayings is don't overcome a physical friction by introducing an electronic one. So don't make your customer download an application in order for you to get the same level of help. If they've got the application, great, leverage these tools. We can port those over through the application infrastructure of what the retailer already has. But if someone doesn't have the application, let's not withhold technology and experience from them. So text messaging and web applications, which is just scanning a QR code and opening up a, uh, a web browser to give you the same experience as if you had the app downloaded yourself. Well, and I'm not seeing anything locked down. Did I miss something? Um, sorry, when you say lockdown, you're talking locking showcases, buddy? I don't say locking showcases, my friend. You, so you will see locking showcases, but you'll see what we call presentation showcases. So if you take a look at this showcase here, we're at smart home stuff. It looks like a bunch of smart plugs. Yes. You'll see that that's an existing locking showcase because the store, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's five or six years old. This technology is only three years old. So this store already had the investment in all these locking showcases. We talk about media and digital signage and all these things, Bob, uh, within our environments as, as media. Media really actually is the product. Uh, you can't replace the product. You know, you think about Costco, Costco's absolute and ultimate media is the product on the shelf. Uh, I might not need ketchup at all, but I can't help myself but put that three pack of ketchup in my cart when I walk past it because the ketchup on the shelf is the media. We leverage these locking showcases, this massive investment that's been made, and we call them presentation showcases. So you'll see every single one of those items is just a single facing. And we never have to touch these showcases. The labor savings on presentation and facing is insane. All ESLs in this locking showcase and all these items are just simply there for presentation. I can go up to this tablet and I can learn about it or I can scan these QR codes, which gives me on my cell phone as a consumer. So this is just, do I have an internet connection? Do I have a web browser? I can do this on my iPhone 6, scan that QR code and have the same experience and order this product from the store and increase what we call customer productivity. Wait, do you have an iPhone 6? I, 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 I don't. I, 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 I Hilariously, like, Bob, I'm Canadian. I, I, I just transitioned from a BlackBerry. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> so I, I do want to uh, circle back on um, you talked about it saves labor. And one of the things you've talked a lot about is that every time we touch a product, we are losing margin, right? So restocking we, we certainly are. things out to the front of the consumer is a downside. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is one of the biggest parts. A lot of retailers and actually consumer brands, they contact us because they've got a loss prevention problem. At the end of the day, when they commit to do this in stores, they do this predominantly because it's a labor savings. Yes, it resolves that loss prevention problem, but it's more so the labor savings. If you look at Planogram and you shove a locking showcase in the Planogram, Planogram goes out the window. Uh, holding capacity goes out the window. A lot wait, wait, why does it go out the window? You got to explain that for us. It, it goes out the window because we, you can't, I mean, if you look at this locking, let me go, let's actually just find like an abysmal locking showcase. Um, and just as I'm walking over there, um, I don't know if you're asking this because you're curious or you're asking this to support the content. Um, the context actually would help me as I go through this. Yeah, through the content. Yeah. 
Yeah, so let me see, let's try to find a dog. Uh, you move fast through a big store, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, I work I worked in retail my whole life. We walk fast. <laughs> we drink lots of coffee and we walk fast. That's it. Mm, let's go over here. So if you take can you see my camera or can you see the camera feed, Bob? We do. Okay, cool. So if you look at this locking showcase, you don't get the cubic holding can you, power of the Can shelf. you describe it for our podcast uh, listeners? What what yes, category? Absolutely. We we are looking this category is actually called personal care. So we are looking at shaving, we are looking at uh, oral care, so we're looking at electric toothbrushes, and then yeah. we're looking at some other health aids and some some blow dryers. So personal care as a, as a category within this function. And if you look at what we have here is if this was just shelving, we would have maybe six times the capacity to actually fulfill our shelf. Locking showcases just aren't designed for, for high cubic um, efficiencies. So when we look at this and we say, okay, we're going to put this locking showcase in, one of two things happen. Either one, we lose lineal presentation because of locking showcases, or two, we want to cover maybe five or six of those things that are high, high value, Bob, but we end up having to like clunk some more stuff in there that's not even high value. Like there's an item in here that is whatever, uh, $29.99. You know, that item probably just got pulled into this locking showcase because we just didn't have the room to do it. Um, I always like the story of, of Michael Dubin, who founded Dollar Shave Club. He was trying to buy uh, razor blades from a large uh, U.S. Uh, pharmacy pharmacy company uh retailer and uh, there were some embarrassing products that were in the locking showcase so when he hit the call button he like hid in the aisle over because he was embarrassed that people would have thought he wanted those embarrassing items even though he wanted gillette so that's actually also like a kind of a victim of locking showcases is that you end up being either losing the the the, the, the cubic capacity or you end up kind of pulling in other categories and they fall victim to the constraints of the locking showcase well, and to your point, if we go back and uh, uh, to your conference, getting thicker glass or bigger locks isn't going to help that. In fact, if anything, it's going to become a very big barrier. And that's one of the things I think that you are helping solve is the shift from digital to brick and mortar. When I actually do go out of my house, I don't want to feel like I need the special password to get the young guy or gal with the scrunchy key to unlock the $3 item. But at the same time, even if I go out there, um, I want to be able to get, get that, which has low value to me, um, quickly and easily so that if I do want to spend extra time looking at that leaf blower or whatever it is, um, I'm not using up my day. So how does... Could you just walk me through exactly, here we are, a real, we're really there, we're really looking for that personal care product, let's just say, please don't make it something embarrassing for me, uh, and we're looking at it, and we want to buy that. Can you explain what the process uh, looks like for us? What, would you want to just do an order right now, Bob? Do it. Uh, we're, let's do it. Okay, well, we, we this is a live store. Uh, they're doing a considerable amount of, of commerce through here. So let's actually um, we'll go to a quiet really, place. You're going to scan that QR code that supports all of the SKUs within this other showcase. This is a live store. We had to get permission to do um, this, uh, this, this order here and let them know that this is not an actual customer pick and that I'm going to pick it as an associate. Cool. I've got my Microsoft Teams going on my Zebra device that I have borrowed from, from, the, from the store. So I'm going to get off my iPhone and get into the Zebra here. Wait, minute, does Microsoft it. have a partnership with you? And does Zebra provide the uh, input device? I just want to make sure we get that clear. So we are partners with Microsoft. We are also partners with Zebra. Uh, we're also partners with Samsung. Samsung's making um, a, a stance, taking a stance into uh, into frontline worker devices with some of their ruggedized uh, phones. Excellent. But basically, this platform, again, this is all about Microsoft Teams. It doesn't really matter what device you have, you know, the customer, as I mentioned, can be using a BlackBerry. They can be using an iPhone 6. Um, there's no barrier there. Um, but for the, and for the store, if you have devices that can um, support Microsoft Teams, you're ready to go for your, nice. for, for your, for your frontline workers. So Let's yes, Microsoft, Microsoft partnership and Microsoft also massive partners with, with both Samsung and with Zebra. It's so because there's an awful lot of people that are not investing in brick and mortar stores and those who are, I just think it's always good to call them out, my friend. So 
here we are. What right. am I buying, by the way? So let, like, we 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 uh, got permission to do one of these little SD cards because very few people buy SD cards anymore. <laughs> so we won't lose that sale. So go ahead and request one of those SD cards. So and Daniel's going to put this on screen so that folks okay. watching this can see it. But you've scanned the QR code. You now on your phone have a digital representation of all the items that are in here, but you also have endless aisle. There are 199 electronics items in this uh, locking showcase, although this locking showcase is only holding, I think, 37 items. So this is showing you not only what's on display, but also some of the stuff that's available online, but because this store is fulfilling orders um, uh, for the online in warehouse, we're actually extending that offering to the in-store customers as well. So we're not forcing people to do e-commerce. All right. So you're going to then go through there and you're going to select one of those items. You will see the correct prices and you will very importantly see the correct on hands. So if you find one of those SD cards that has got one or more items available uh, to, to purchase, you're just gonna hit that you wanna add that to cart. I have not asked you for your name, your phone number, it's very frictionless. And you're just gonna say com commit cart. And when I commit the cart? And you're gonna commit the cart. So we're trying to get you, Bob, as a consumer to build a physical cart in store because we obviously can't do this for all categories. We want to look at high velocity products. We want to make that something you add to your cart. But these low velocity, high cube or high value products, we want to make this an electronic experience for you. Nice. So you're going to hit add to cart. It might prompt you for a locker. If that was a small item, it might fit in a locker and it might prompt you for a locker experience. Uh, your order progress, A4. Your item's going to so, be available for pickup at customer service when ready. It's under review. It's waiting shipment, the waiting payment. So, so I got a notification, Bob, on Microsoft Teams of your request for that item. Cool. So I'm going to go into this adaptive card in Microsoft Teams because this is like my Uber fare that I was talking to you about. Mm -hmm. And within Teams, I've got this request for, for, you, for your item. And the thing I like about this is it's showing me what's going on in the moment. So as a consumer, you're not sitting there like, did it take it? Do I have to hit this again? Should yeah. I? It's picking my order. It's almost done. So so I claimed that order in Microsoft Teams. So now not only, so this was kind of a two for one in terms of uh, experience and efficiency. Not only do you as the customer know that, hey, you know what? Someone's actually going to get this for me. So many times you hit a call button and you're like, I don't know if anybody's coming. Do I hit it again? You know, do I walk around and find somebody? Should I stand my post? Because I'm oh, terrified nice. that someone's going to come and help me and then it's going to be gone. Um, as soon as I hit claim in Teams, not only do you know that, but everybody in the store knows that Nolan at Sync, because I'm logged in through Nolan at Sync through my identity in Microsoft. Everybody in the store knows that Nolan at Sync is picking that order. And so, because so many times you hit a call button or you get a page or something, either nobody does it or three people do it. Because there's no data, there's no ligature between the efficiencies and the workflow communication. So we're at the strike of a single thumb tap on the screen, updating the customer and updating all the staff. Well, that's huge. Again, I reason why we're talking folks at home is because this is such an amazing technology that uh, to me checks all the boxes. Why more stores aren't doing this, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess there are smaller stores that would say, well, we don't need it, but you know what? I don't know. I think everybody needs needs this for the simple matter of employees feel more empowered. They know what's going on. Customers feel that they know what's going on. And then your managers know what's going on at any moment. So like you started earlier, uh, the customer had to wait for seven minutes. You knew it wasn't like, hey, I know you've been here for a while. I know it was seven minutes. All of that wraps up into a brick and mortar experience that's, yeah, that's better than anybody else's. And let's face it, isn't that why we're we're going there is to find the people who are making life easier, not adding friction, like more keys and locks for anything, not just the big stuff, but the small stuff too. So you're waiting in for your cashier now, or are you? Yeah. So the cool thing, Bob, is that you'll see on your phone that you've got a progress tracker and it shows that your order has been picked and it's, and it's complete. Yes. And no, again, we want you to build, we want you to build two carts. We want you to build a physical cart of all that high velocity product that we don't want to put in locking showcases that we, without risk, we can do so. But what we really also want to do is we want to go through here and your item is A4. You have the barcode hosted on your screen to yep. pay for the product. So you can go to a regular cash out or you can go to a man lane. So again, because, you know, and the cool thing is that there's no integration required for POS. 
because you, the, the POS device doesn't know the difference between scanning a barcode that's on a phone or scanning a barcode that is on um, uh, the box. So you can go up to a POS device, no integration required to get that done. You'll see actually at the, start, at the, at the uh, front of the store, it actually shows that your item is now waiting pickup A4 and you on your phone will show that your item is paid for and it's just ready for pickup. And that's why it's got its little disclaimer that says, I'm here, so I can click that and then the, that opens up the door for me or something, yes? If it was, yeah, if we wanted to do a locker transaction, we go through a locker and you could open it up. Again, no application required, no paper, no wow. pin code, four digits. This is, again, getting back to the whole, if we're going to resolve physical friction, let's not introduce electronic friction. That's amazing. Anything else you want to tell me while you're in the store before we go outside and ask you a few more things? Yeah, well, let's quickly just burn the store um, and go through this thing because, you know, we showed a couple very uh, easy categories to pick on in terms of, you know, we went through um, drills. Everybody's had the experience of going to a big DIY retailer and seeing all those locking showcases and the frustration. Again, this comes down to customer productivity. We think about, you know, we, we, we all talk about employee productivity because the cost of labor. And we all think about the, you know, that old paradigm of, increased time in store increases the basket. If I'm standing there for 15 minutes waiting for help, although I'm in the store for 25 minutes, that's not good customer productivity. I'm not building a cart. And when we do lock it up, walk it up, we're basically escorting the customer to the till, telling them, don't be thinking about buying anything else today. You're, you're checking out right now. So this again, allows you to shop at your pace and your leisure and increase that customer productivity. We are in a change of season right now here, but this is your patio area. There's no box stock on the floor. This is all pat this all these items are all available to be requested. So we go to this barbecue over here. If you want this barbecue, you can scan that QR code for gas. You can scan the other QR code for propane. It's gonna allow you to get in there. It's gonna say, hey, this is a big bulky item. Do you want it delivered? Add delivery. Hey, this item comes in 72 pieces. Do you want it assembled for you? Add assembly, $49.99. You can go through all these pieces and do this and we get to be a merchant again and merchandise we get to show people hey this is what this cool barbecue looks like not here's a box sitting on the floor and you talked about labor earlier in the cost of labor when we take product off of a truck and put it into a locking showcase and we have to look at what is called floor floor fill absorption which is how many times that box of 12 fit into the locking showcase so generally speaking you're talking about low velocity items they only generally have a single facing. Those box of 12, you're gonna take that box up to the floor, six are gonna to go to the floor. You're gonna be a do a replenishment in a couple months. You're gonna put three more of the floor. Three more months later, you're gonna do a replenishment as well and you're gonna put that on there. You're touching the product four more times when you do that. And that's just a massive cost of labor in the sense of you can just take the entire box of that high risk product and put it into a, a warehouse picking location that's not only gonna facilitate your in-store pick, but also is gonna facilitate your online pick in a much more uh, efficient way. The other component of this is that instead of responding to a call box, being interrupted from productivity, going and helping a customer, doing well, lock it up, walk it up, and then going back to that original task and getting to the same level of productivity, that on average takes 12 minutes of time in retail to get back to the same level of productivity. When you're getting an electronic request whereby you don't have to go and find the customer, understand what they want, escort them to the till, go back to your original task, this is now three minutes and 50 seconds. It's kind of what we found to be the sweet spot in terms of the average picking time. So you've got a reduction of labor on the sales floor by two thirds, and you touch the product four less times per transaction when it comes to high cube and it comes to high risk products. That's pretty amazing. So data privacy is a big concern through all of this, right? So how do you guys ensure the secure handling of all this data? I'm, I'm scanning and I'm, clicking i mean are there are there things that that you you have to build into that so that customers feel secure yeah i mean you know first and foremost you talk about the security <laughs> Whoop. first and foremost you talk i don't know if you can hear that first and foremost first and foremost you talk about uh, the platform so everything is on azure you know, this is all uh, SSO and identity. This is through Microsoft Teams. And again, core to what we're talking about here, I don't know anything about you. Everything in is anonymized. You're just a serialized order request in store. I don't know who you are. I have no PII about you whatsoever. You're just simply asking for product and I'm facilitating that request. So, so when it comes to privacy, 
outside of POS, we're outside of a loyalty program, all of those kind of things. Well, and that's the cool thing about leveraging the smartphone for the for the for the barcode. You know, we've had lots of different conversations with with retailers, and everybody's got some gotchas up front. But one of the key gotchas on this is that when you're leveraging the smartphone and hosting the QR code on the screen, you're you're maintaining PCI compliance, and you're maintaining all of those loyalty and reward elements that are so important to them because you're not changing the checkout process in store. They're walking up to POS. You're going through self checkout. Your POS is not only again maintaining the PCI compliance. But it's prompting you, hey, do you have your loyalty and rewards? If you're going through a regular checkout lane, hey, here's a promotion that we're running. Do you want to donate to charity? All those pieces don't get interrupted. So again, operationally, this is very much fitting within the ligatures of what traditional checkout and operational experience looks like. It's just addressing all those low velocity, high cube, high value items. I love it. Well, before we continue, we love our loyal listeners. So please do me a favor and give us a five-star rating. And we're going to return after this quick word from SalesRx online retail sales training program. Hey, it's Bob again. I'm not only your host, but also the founder of the SalesRx online retail sales training program. How many sales that should have been yours walked out your front doors today? You know, with shoppers being more discerning about where and when they shop, You need to convert more lookers to buyers. And SalesRx is the perfect solution to make training memorable. It's bite-sized, it can fit easily into your schedules. Don't tell me you don't have time to train. If you can give them time to take a break, you have time for them to train. Now the training builds from some of the quickest ways to engage shoppers to the most advanced. Everything is planned so you can implement your sales training program with a click of a button. And there's a reason we're on four continents training thousands because sales are scalable. Everybody learns the same new skills that will grow your sales. In fact, 83% of users report a double digit increase in their sales within six months. Wouldn't you like that to be your story? Visit SalesRx to learn more and set up a call with me to see how we can help. That's S-A-L-E-S-R-X dot com. Now back to the broadcast. back with Nolan Wheeler somewhere out in the wilds of British uh, Victoria, British Columbia. He is the uh, CEO at Sync Technology. He's been sharing with us what it looks like out in the wild. So what are some of the biggest challenges that we haven't spoken about that um, retailers face that Sync is aiming to solve? I mean, we've talked about labor. We've talked about theft. What else is part of this? You know, it, it just comes down to change. Uh, Bob, um, we are in a culture whereby there's a scarcity for change and it comes down to there is um, a guiding light that is fairly consistent over a 30 year period of time that the way to resolve shrink is to use policing and security tactics. Um, so very con- like our, our only competitor is, is a locking showcase. Our competitor is a call button. Um, this really comes down to awareness. Uh, the majority of our uh, lead intake actually comes from senior level leadership, those in the C-suite that say, I had no idea this was available. Why the heck aren't we doing this? Um, it really just comes down to a change of thinking as it pertains to uh, operations and merchandising. That's really the biggest challenge. And that's generally the biggest hurdle that we face in terms of getting retailers to say, you know what, let's take that real high risk location and give this a shot. Great thought. And, you know, um, that's a great point, too, that so much of retail is in silos. And I didn't think of it. Therefore, <laughs> it's not good. And, you know, yeah, it's great. It'd be great if every CEO heard you and and went ahead and do it. Of course, I'm a big believer in it, just from what I saw from you a couple of uh, months ago. But that reception to change is really hard to push up from the bottom, right? So if somebody saw this and they're like, hey, our managers be like, yeah, that sounds too complicated. So how do you make somebody secure? I mean, obviously this platform has been out there for years. It's rock solid. Um, How do you reassure someone that um, this, well, I think this changes the way you think about your retail operation in general, right? Because if, if you're out there doing what you're doing, maybe there are other solutions out there as well and instead of pulling your hair out without saying that we're uh you know when i was a kid people showed up on time or when i was a kid nobody stole or we need better laws (laughs) instead of getting caught in all that nonsense maybe um there are other things that come up and people start thinking that hey 
this is how we would value our employees better. Or if we had a magic wand, what are the friction points? And I think that you have solved a lot of them, but I can already hear people won't work for our store, right? Yeah, I mean, it's all those things that I would say that, you know, for us, the, the inflection point is Microsoft. And, and although we've had this sitting there as a Microsoft platform for a number of years, um, only really in the last 12 months through a tremendous partnership through them, um, this is now downloadable through Marketplace. This comes downloadable through appsource.microsoft.com. This is something now whereby you can really bring in confidence within uh, leadership, confidence within IT. Um, this is part of, you know, Azure spend. This is something whereby a retailer can say, you know what, this is not so scary. We have all these teams licenses or teams licenses or something that we've considered for a long time. Let's grab some, let's spin up a store. This is all within the walls of, of, of Azure and of, 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 of Active Directory uh, and through Marketplace and AppSource. That's really probably been the big inflection point for us because in fairness to folks in the past, you know, um, you really do need a powerhouse on the security front uh, and the expertise and the scalability of Microsoft to help you through a solution like this. And, and really, it's, that's been a transformation for us over the last 12 months. Nice. Well, as we wrap this up, you've been generous with your time today, my friend. You know, as somebody that's been really deeply entrenched in retail tech, what's one piece of advice you give to retailers looking to adapt uh, in today's market? I guess the, a kind of a, an anecdote, I would say, is that when retail first started, it was the general store and everything was behind the counter. And, and suddenly we started putting more and more things in front of the counter. But we drew a line at some point. We don't put narcotics. Uh, we, we're not going to get rid of the, uh, the pharmacy counter, I don't think, anytime soon, Bob. Um, so it really comes down to a point of challenging ourselves to say, did we go too far from general store to where we are today? Are there certain things like we have in pharmacy that really probably should be something that we keep in our warehouse? Can we transform shoplifting misdemeanor offense to felony burglary by getting stuff in the back room where really not only does it belong for safety and for loss prevention, but for the labor efficiencies because the velocity of the cell is too low. That's probably what I would have as a takeaway uh, for, for consideration for your listeners. Nice. Well, my last question is every long time listener knows I have to ask, it's the title of the podcast. Tell me something good about retail. Boy, I, you know what? I, I came from retail. I love retail. This is my my retail pride, Ron Thurston, um, accidental career in retail. Retail is fun. Retail is experiential. Retail is 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 about uh, discovery. And and for those who think that retail brick and mortar are going away, I, I would uh, strongly advise that they might want to reconsider that thesis. So you know the fun part about all this and the exciting part and 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 the motivation for this is retail is still an enjoyable thing to grab your coffee and to walk through a store and to explore and to see new things and this is a way to support retailers to continue that experiential endeavor excellent and we can feel that from you today well i appreciate you joining us nolan and you've been listening to this you'll have the links you can go and check it out but you know i think the one thing that we hear over and over is we can't we can't we can't but then when someone holds this up and says, but maybe we could, you got to be willing to go out and do it. And I hope you do because retail still is responsible for one in four jobs in North America. I'm Bob Phibbs, The Retail Doc. Thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Bob. You've been listening to Tell Me Something Good About Retail with Bob Phibbs, The Retail Doctor. As a listener, you can receive free information and guides when you visit retaildoc.com and sign up for our exclusive weekly newsletter. Thanks for being with us. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. To virtually bring Bob to all of your crew and associates, check out www.salesrx.com.